but if that's okay. 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 So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you then. Okay. okay. So I'm going to hit share screen over here. And then, so this is the SD card. And I'm going to click on, uh, so I have in, uh, Cura already installed. So whenever you finish installing Cura, it pops up this add new machine wizard, right? Right. Okay. And so I'm just going to go ahead and click next. And I'm going to choose other in this case because this is actually rep wrap model. So I'm going to click other, click next, and I'm going to click on Mendel is the type of operating system that we're using. I'm going to click next after Mendel, and it's finished setting up that type of operating system for the Affinibot. Okay, then it's going to pull me into the environment, and then I do want to change most of these settings over here on the basic settings. And so here at the layer height, the layer height is going to consist of basically your resolution or how clean the outside look of your model will be. So if you use a 0 0.1, that's going to be 100 microns, and it's gonna look nicer, but it's also gonna take more plastic, and it is going to take more um, time in order to complete that print. So we use anywhere from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 millimeters in layer height. And usually we like to use 0 0.2 just for a good quality, and it's not the best quality, but it gets done faster and uses less material. So here on shelf thickness, since our nozzle size is going to be 0.4, we want this to be a multiple of that. So I'm going to ch change the shelf thickness to 0.8. And so whenever Cura has a setting that it doesn't quite accept, it turns yellow, and if it says it can't do it, it will be red. So in this case, it's yellow because it's uncertain about the nozzle size. And so I'm going to go ahead and change the nozzle size down here at the bottom to 0 0.4. And that's the size of nozzle that we have on the A5 printers. Okay. Okay. And then here on fill, on bottom and top thickness, we're going to keep the bottom and top thickness the same as the shell thickness, just so that it's consistent throughout the model. So when it's printing, it's going to have consistent layers from either the shell and also from the top and bottom. Fill density is up to you, depending upon how much durability you would like it to be. And generally, we say anywhere from 5 to 20% is a good range for fill density. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 20% here. Our yeah. print speed, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, Matt, the, I just went online and downloaded Cura, you know, went to Cura Free Download, and it's a different version. I don't know. It must be a newer version. It is a newer version. So the version we recommend using for our Finibots is 15.04.6. Okay, and I saw that link on your SD card, I think, yeah. and, and, okay, it worked with the newer one? Does that matter? Um, I mean, not necessarily, as long as you did get it to work. We like to use this version of Cura because it's, uh, it's much easier to use with our operating system that we currently have on our A5s. And so okay. we recommend using this, and it's more intuitive than that other one is. Yeah, okay. As long as I don't have any troubles, though, I could just keep using the one I have. If I start having problems, I guess I could uninstall it and then go with this one. That's what <laughs> I would recommend. If you install this one, it will install it alongside the other Cura, so you wouldn't have to uninstall necessarily. But if okay. you experience problems with the 2.62, I think it is, that Cura is running yes. right now, um, yeah. yes, I would definitely recommend changing to 15046. And you can do that just by going where you saw the download link earlier for Cura. If you select below, it says view all versions, and you should be able to find it either on the website or also on the SD cards that we provided for you. Okay. Okay, and there is also a manual on the SD cards to also look through that information. Right. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't see all that stuff till I started doing stuff. I, I did a bad thing and started just doing things and YouTubing things and didn't recognize that y'all had all that on the SD cards. So. Yeah, we try and make it easy for you. <laughs> yeah, and I made it hard. <laughs> but I got it all. I should have just waited. I was too anxious. Certainly. Well, okay, so let's finish going through these settings a little bit. So the print okay. speed on this one is going to be right at 50 millimeters per second. We could slow that down. We just don't want to speed that up. These print well at 50 millimeters per second. If you speed it up past 50 millimeters by too much, it's going to, of course, making your prints look stringy or it's going to cause problems in your shell thickness. 
And so we recommend that 50 is your top speed that you're gonna use. If you want something to come out at a better look or have a greater tolerance on the outside, reduce the print speed because it will improve quality. Okay. Okay. Now the printing temperature for us is going to be 220 degrees Celsius. So we're just gonna change that to 220. We just like to print PLA a little bit warmer than the 210 that this suggests on the screen. And we like it because it's easier to push through the extruder and there'll be less instances of clogging. Okay. So the bed temperature, we don't have a heated bed. So we're going to change this to zero. Okay. Support type. We generally say use everywhere on your support type. This is just because it covers the bases. If you have anything that's overhanging or we're having problems printing something, using the everywhere support type is going to give us a better look and a cleaner build at the end. And so we could choose touching build plate, but everywhere covers all of our bases and it, it brings less worries whenever we're completing a print or slicing something. Okay. So on platform adhesion type, we don't need a large amount of platform adhesion on this type of lock build because it is so accepting. And that's also why we use the double folded paper because it, it sticks so well to this surface. Now, if you're having, if you're printing a very small object or something that's much more pinpoint or has few points of contact, we recommend using brim as your platform adhesion type. We don't recommend using raft simply because of the amount of material it uses and the hard separation that you have to do afterwards. So for filament, our filament's diameter is going to be 1.75. And we're gonna keep the flow at 100%. And then we changed this nozzle size earlier when we changed shell and bottom top thickness. Okay. Uh -huh. And so finally, if you're using this type of Cura, to finish setting up this machine, we would click up here in the top left on machine and navigate to machine settings. And this is going to allow us to set the maximum width, depth, and height for our printer or otherwise what our build surface area is. And so for maximum width, we're going to go with 125. For maximum depth, we're going to do 150 and maximum height is going to be 100 millimeters. And then also we're going to want to unselect this heated bed option, because then again, these A5s are not using a heated bed. And then we'll click OK. And it should change our environment to be the exact size of the build plate, and then we're ready to use Cura and slice objects. Great. So hopefully you got a few things that you may have not Known oh yeah one, and it should be easier for you to set that up in any case so yeah thank you that was helpful okay what else are you kind of looking for you want me to kind of walk through placing objects in cura with you or using the slicer itself uh sure okay so i'm going to go ahead and click on load and i'm going to navigate to my sd card so your sd card also has sample files on your sd card and we're going to grab and STL. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this NWA. Actually, let's grab the six sided dice. Gives you a little bit more area to play with. So up here in the top left, you can see that it was a loading bar for a moment. And what that does was generating the slicing layers. And then it gives you a readout of the time required to print it. And it's a very accurate time. It usually ranges anywhere from two minutes less or more in order to make that print. And it's really nice to have that estimate accurate. And then right below that, we're going to be see 0 0.8 meters. And that's going to be the amount or length that we will utilize. And then two grams of filament will be used in this creation. So also here in the top right, we have view mode. And we can select multiple different views. I find that the most useful one is going to be layers. And this shows you the actual sliced layers that Cura went through, and you can pan through them as you would like to, and also see the infill and kind of how that shape is going to happen, okay? Mm -hmm. 
if I wanted to rotate or manipulate this object, those options are in the bottom left hand corner. So I can rotate it in any way or lay flat and it should automatically generate it flat on the surface. <coughs> so to rotate, we utilize these rings that are around it. So we're going to have a yellow, a green, and a red. And just depending upon what kind of axis you want to rotate around, you can do so. And it should give you a number display next to the outside of the ring and telling you how many degrees you're rotating by. Okay, we also have a scale function. We can use uniform scale or we can use a non-uniform scale. And that also serves as a function to maximize our build area. So we can click to max and it will maximize that six sided dice and completely filled our build plate as much as it can. And then we also have op options to mirror Z or Y, and that again moves the object and manipulates it. I'm gonna scale that back down. So here we can just click on the object, delete those numbers, and click one, and it'll return it to its original size. So on this, we can also right click this object and we can have multiple different options. So center on platform, that's always nice to have. It will lay it flat when you click center on platform. We also have a delete object or a multiply object. And in, in the case that you're printing a large object, you can also split it into parts to print off separately and then uh, combine it later. That's only if it's being set as an original image. So this image here, you wouldn't be able to split it into, unless it was deliberately oh, in set. multiple sections. Oh, okay. Yeah, so in this case, I wouldn't want to split this object because it fits entirely on the build plate and I can print it just fine as it is. Mm -hmm. In the case that you had a large object that you couldn't fit onto this size A5 build plate, you would, you, it's possible to split the object into two separate parts print those halves and then combine them. Okay. And then once we're finished manipulating our object and getting it into a position that we would like, so it looks like mine is kind of, seems to be at an angle here. So I'm going to adjust that and lay it flat onto the build plate just by clicking lay flat there. And then I want it to be in the center, so I'm just gonna readjust that once. And here, it also has toolpath to SD. So you are welcome to go file save or file save as, but if you have an SD card plugged into your computer, it'll immediately toolpath to it. And I can click on that and it brings up a message saying which drive it saved it to. And then I have the choice to eject or just exit out of that. And so I would just simply eject it here. And now it says I'm ready to eject the card. And I take my SD card. And at that point, I would put it into the printer. So we would just take the SD card and we'd insert it directly into this area here. And it should feel a little click and you'll hear the noise click through. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the entire process of slicing and transferring it to the printer. So do you have any questions about what's going on right now? And how do you yeah. think about these printers overall? I, personally, I really like them. They're a nice little, um, mm -hmm. it's very similar, sort of, I, mine I don't have a display on, so it's you like, it's very similar in a lot of ways to mine. Um, and I just like the small little printers, mm -hmm. it, but it's it's a very nice little printer. And, and even, you know, coming from the Ultimaker 2, there's been a learning curve for me because it's very different, but once I've kind of figured things out, you know, I like it. It seems good. Yeah. Awesome. So um, I know you guys have six of these. Um, yes. I don't know if you've already set all of them up or anything like that, but I would definitely make sure that all of the printers are, you know, in tip-top shape. Whenever you pull them out, of course, you don't need to have any loose build plates, and you don't want anything here to wiggle a crazy amount and you don't want any motors unplugged before you start trying to use it. So I want you, of course, you need to double check all of your printers when you pull them out because shipping can do all sorts of different things to them. And double check on the motors. 
double check the build plate if it can move or not, and it should not move. It should be very stable. And then this should be very stable as well. It may wiggle a little bit, and that's just the movement of these motors here. And it's okay, it's not going to affect your print job majorly. Now, if it wiggles and you personally feel like that is way too much, then that is something we can adjust and you can always uh, send a support ticket in to us, okay? Also, make sure that the motor here, the Z-axis motor, here, let me swap cameras real quick. This Z-axis motor is completely flush to the build plate. That is something that can happen and if it's not, they could cause serious problems. So just double check on that. And then of course you have your inputs here for your motors and those also connect inside of this area right in here. And you should be able to see the white tags for that. So. We've used, we've used now three okay. of the six. Okay, so three of them. Actually no, testing. four of the six. Oh. So we've tested, we've done oh. four of the six. So for this, just fine. I'm sorry. What? What did you, you do? Have, you've already tested four of the six printers that you had. Yes, Ian did three of them, and I took one home and have been playing with it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. Yeah, yes. I've, I've, used, I've, I've printed. Yeah, he's printed a lot of rockets. He's counting them now. So. Yeah, he's been, eighteen of them so far. Yeah. So I've been and I've done some. I've actually um, done a couple of actually some spinner things as well. A couple of these actually this one that was printed there, but it's the same thing. So yeah. it's it's a, it's a very good printer. Um, awesome. I like I'm them. glad it's been working for you. That's that's great to hear. Um, so I think we went over all the Cura settings. You should be set on that. If you do need those settings again, you did notice that they were on the SD card. Yeah, so you can a little too that. late. Yeah. Take care of that. And then there's also descriptions of how to do those things within the manual that is on the SD card. So you can yeah. always look back at that as well. Um, okay. and then we touched based on a little bit of troubleshooting, like leveling the build plate, checking the machine, and, you know, the belts and such, and that everything – operates as you would expect it to and then we leveled it right so are you comfortable with how this levels uh -huh. i feel like both of you seem comfortable with that you seem to immediately take to it okay and then whenever it's manipulated of course you are one to, going to want to double check that idea um and then we went over soft because you did have a question about that do you want any more information about soft or do you feel like you understand the concept behind that I understand. Okay, yeah. awesome. And then remember that the fail safe for these computers is to simply unplug them. So if you're having any problems, okay, to unplug anytime. Just, just pull it directly out and it will stop all operation and it's not going to harm it in any way. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's what I was uncomfortable useful. with. Yeah, that's nice. See, I'm used to that. Yeah. That's and being like that. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. the, you see, I'm used to, you were saying about traveling. Um, postage a piece of mine broke in the traveling and so the first time it embedded the, the hot end uh -huh. embedded itself into the um plate. aluminum plate yeah um which was fun now how long would you say it's okay to i mean do you just leave your filament hooked up to your printer or do you every time you're finished take it out every night and put it in a Ziploc baggie or whatever? What do you oh, do? Oh, we, we leave it hooked up the entire time. It just depends on what's going on. So if the printer is heated, you definitely want to pull the filament out to protect it from baking within the extruder head. And if it bakes inside of the extruder head, it's going to be a major problem. It creates almost like a complete carbon section, and that carbon section is going to stop up everything. And so ways to get rid of that would be soft pulling, or trying to push filament through. But if the printer finishes printing, you can leave these printing overnight and there should be absolutely no problems. And of course, when it finishes the print, it's going to cool down and your filament will also cool down in the extruder and there shouldn't be any problems between that. So yeah, okay, you can so leave the filament in there as long as you want and you only really need to change it whenever you want to change colors. If you leave okay. the printer on and heated, it is a problem. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So it's okay if it's not 
you know, the humidity might affect it, but you all just leave your filaments out. We don't find that the humidity effects our, our okay. PLA very often at all. It just seems to work perfectly fine. We actually store all of our PLA without being in plastic wrap or anything like oh, that. Okay. It functions great. Okay. Okay. So I don't have to panic about that or worry about that too much. Yeah, actually, I can show you that if you would like. Sure. We have the racks of PLA out here. Because, yeah, in, a, in my classroom, it would look so cool if I could have it sitting out, you know, where you can see the colors and stuff. Yeah, and so, I don't know if you guys can see out there, but yeah. this one. Can you see a little bit of the racks that are past us? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's what I thought it would be neat on a dowel rod or something like that and break yeah, so we also have a rack over there that you should be able to see and we don't necessarily keep them wrapped in anything so the ones that are wrapped in plastic are directly from the manufacturer and we just have it unpacked and that's the only okay thing. okay so yeah we store a lot of our our PLA just outside and it is extremely humid in Arkansas if you were to look up the humidity in this area it's probably close to 50 it's it's typically above 50 percent okay okay good to know yeah okay all right so what other questions do you have kind of about the printer or the filament or troubleshooting it I can't think of anything okay well, so do you guys feel comfortable? Yeah, well, we're good. You can get your printers to work and everything? Oh, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Well, glad to hear it. Okay, I think that wraps up our, our little training session then, right? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, if you do have any questions, you're welcome to email me. Um, I, I'll send you a follow-up email, and then you'll have my contact information just in case. And you can, of course, contact me on anything that's bothering you. Or if you do need support for your printers, please go to our support page and click on the support ticket and submit that through there so we can get the information from you. Okay, great. Awesome. Well, well sounds good. Um, I will also have a recording of this training session and the parts that we did go over from Cura on, and then uh, you will be able to view that at any point in time, and then we also have those resources for you on your SD card. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much. This was very helpful. Yeah, of course. It was nice talking with you. Hopefully, your printers will be good, and if you do have any problems, we'd love to help. So. All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. You too.